Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to another video. Uh, we got some interesting news to talk about today. There hasn't been a whole lot going on in the world of finance, but I did see this interesting story out of CNBC. So let's go ahead and pull that up real quick. So it says here, crypto is dead in America, says longtime Bitcoin bull. Guess who it is? Chama Fali Hapatia. That's right. The guy with the All In podcast, the little popular tech investor guy. I think he's like a billionaire or something like that. Let me just say before we even get into the story, I am so sick of him. I am so sick of Jason Calacanis, and I am so sick of everybody on that All In podcast. They were really good last year. I enjoyed the podcast. I like watching it. But now some of the things that they're saying, which, by the way, Chamath has always been a grifter and a clown. I'm not a fan of him, by the way. I think Chamath is a bad human being. That's just my opinion. I think this guy profited massively by grifting off of his platform. What do I mean by that? Well... First, Tremont started off by going on CNBC and all these popular news networks and whatever and basically pumping up his SPACs. You know, he invested in a – what's that health company he invested in? Clover Health. Clover Health. He invested in a SPAC called Clover Health. Boom. Down in the dumps. That didn't do well. He invested in something else. Didn't he invest, invest in a Virgin Galactic guys? I can't remember. He invested in a bunch of different companies. But uh, I know SoFi was another one. Basically, he was calling himself the SPAC king. He was extremely arrogant. He was basically comparing himself to Warren Buffett and saying that he was better than Warren Buffett. And if you don't believe me, you know, you could go on his Twitter. He had a tweet where he basically compared the performance of his social capital fund to Warren Buffett. And it's just like typical stock bubble stuff. You get all these cocky, arrogant guys who don't know a thing about investing come out of nowhere and think they're the greatest because they have crazy returns by investing in risky assets. But whatever. So... Jamal Pagliabatia came out and said that crypto is dead. We'll read the key points out of the CNBC article. It says here, tech investor Jamal Pagliabatia, who previously claimed that Bitcoin has replaced gold and would eventually get to 200000 now says crypto is dead in America. So I want you guys to understand who we're dealing with here. We are dealing with somebody who just two years ago said that Bitcoin was going to hit $200,000. Now he's reversing and he goes from saying that Crypto or, or Bitcoin is going to hit $200,000 to now he's saying crypto is completely dead. I mean, seriously, the, he's like the Jim Cramer. He's like another Jim Cramer saying one thing one year. And you know what? You know what these people are? These guys are fair weather fans. Whenever stocks and crypto or whatever is popular going up, these guys all jump in the bandwagon and talk about how great it is and give out these insane, stupid price predictions that make no freaking sense. And you know, have the nerve a year later when things are not as good and they're going down to now say that crypto's dead. See, the reason why I'm on him so much is because this guy had the nerve to compare himself to Warren Buffett. But guess what? Warren Buffett is not a fair weather fan. Warren Buffett said from the beginning that crypto is garbage. It's trash. It's worthless. He would never buy it. What did Chamath do? He said crypto's going to the moon. Bitcoin's going to 200000 Oh, never mind. Crypto's dead. But guess who was already saying that before Chamath? Warren Buffett, the guy he tried to compare himself to and say that he's a better investor than, it's absolutely insane. Let's keep reading. Chamath says the United States authorities have firmly pointed their guns at crypto. Polly Abatia said on the latest episode of the All In Podcast, I actually don't agree with that. I actually don't agree. I don't think that the United States authorities have pointed their guns at crypto like they're trying to destroy it. I really don't believe that. I believe that the United States government is bringing regulation to crypto. I think there's a difference. There's a difference between completely trying to destroy something and end it and bringing regulation to it. That's just my personal opinion. Based on some of the things that I've seen uh, the SEC chair Gary Gensler say and some of the old writings and stuff from back in the day, I really don't think that they're just thinking in their heads, we're going to destroy crypto forever. I, I really think they're looking at this like... Yeah, this thing has gotten so popular because everybody knows that crypto has been nothing but scams, grifters, frauds, crooks, criminals. That's all the type of people that were involved in crypto and unfortunately are still involved in crypto. And I think what happened was before that was allowed to continue back in the day. We're talking 2017, 2018, different things like that because it wasn't as popular. You know, it was kind of that thing that just a bunch of computer programming nerds did. You know, very few people were in crypto back then. But now because of that bull market in 2021... It became popular and now that it became popular and now you're seeing tens of millions of investors get hurt and some of these crypto stories become breaking news like Sam Bankman-Fried and stuff. 
Well, now the government has to step in because that's just how this stuff works. So I disagree with Jamal Pauli Abatia. I, I don't think that they're just downright trying to destroy crypto. And I actually don't think that crypto's dead necessarily. Now, if you want to say that 99% of cryptos are dead, sure. Yeah, they probably will be. Most of the cryptos are not going to survive this regulation. It's probably good. That, that's probably true. But that's how it should be. Like, think about it. Isn't it kind of, you guys ever thought how stupid it is that there's like 8,000 cryptos? Why is there a list of the top 100 cryptos and they're all basically the same thing? They just do different things. Why can't there just be one or two? That's what I think. I don't even think there should be like 50 million of them. And the fact that anybody could create their own is fishy too. And, you know, I just think there should be two. Just Bitcoin, Ethereum. Leave it at Bitcoin, Ethereum and call it a day. Who needs all the other crap? Seriously, who needs it? That's, that's just my opinion. So... Now it says the SEC has ramped up its enforcement of the crypto. Okay, we already got that. We already got that. Uh, crypto is dead in America. Here we go. Polyapatia blamed crypto's demise largely on regulators who have gotten much more aggressive in the pursuit of bad actors in the industry. Securities and Exchange Commission Gary Gensler said crypto trading platforms should abide by strict U.S. securities laws. I don't see an issue with that. I, I have no problem with Gary Gensler saying that. In answering questions in front of lawmakers recently, Gensler connected the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank with the crypto industry. And yeah, okay, so basically this whole thing just kind of talks about regulation and I see Coinbase is listed here and stuff like that. But let's just go ahead and finish this whole thing off with Chamath. So you guys know me. Like I said, I'm not a fan of Chamath, but I just wanted to highlight this just to say because, you know, most of what this channel does, right, is we try to preach common sense on this channel. And unfortunately, I still see this with some of these cults. Like, for example, if you look at the Palantir cult, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, uh, uh, whatever his name is, Peter Thiel is invested in Palantir and this smart guy, for some reason, the investing community gets obsessed with people who are already rich. They think that because somebody is a billionaire or millionaire, or they're rich, that they have some sort of credibility, which they don't, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're smart guys. Don't get me wrong, but that doesn't mean they have credibility when it comes to investing. In my opinion, there's only a handful of people that have credibility when it comes to investing. And obviously you got like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger. I don't think some of these other people are the same, but my overall point is you got to be very careful. Because these guys are fair weather fans and they will flip on a dime. They will flip on you. One day you're thinking these guys are geniuses and they're the greatest ever. I mean, literally, this guy's like another Kathy Wood. One day they look like a genius and then when the stock market goes back to normal and every freaking penny stock isn't 10xing, now you see how smart these guys really are. They're not all that smart. You know, some of these guys who made all their money got kind of lucky, if you want my honest opinion. Like, that's really what I think. Like, a lot of investing is luck. Some of these guys who like 10 and 20x their money, that almost never happens in investing. You know, a lot of that is just pure luck, but unfortunately, these stories get highlighted the most, and people want to be like these people, and this is what ends up happening. This guy was telling you that Bitcoin was going to go to 200000 That's right. Pump my bags. Pump the stock. Pump the crypto. Clover Health. Virgin Galactic. SoFi. How are all those things doing right now? Bitcoin. Boo-boo. SoFi. Boo-boo. Clover Health. I don't even think they're listening to the stock market anymore, to be honest with you. I don't even know. I haven't looked at that stock in a while. But that's just my whole thing, man. You got to be real careful with these people, man. These people are crazy. So, yeah, just once again, another video of trying to teach, uh, trying to preach common sense investing and not listening to clowns who don't know what they're talking about. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.